Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Patrick and in this video I want to talk about the future of employment or the future of the workforce. Or oh, I don't I don't even want to necessarily call it a workforce, but I I'll say the future of of a life force. Like like we're going to be going we are actually we already have started to um we started this process, but it's going to be more so with people are doing things that they love to do and getting some type of fulfillment out of it, and yet in some way they're still being productive, then more so than a workforce, a labor force, a job that you have to go to to feel like you um, need to or to, to know that you need to support yourself to be able to, you know, get certain things in life, right? Um, so it's going to be more of a life force, okay? Now, what do I mean by this, though, okay? All right, if you, as you can see, guys, we're moving more into like a gig economy or a freelance economy, a virtual economy, okay? Work is not entirely what it used to be. We still, you know, you still have this, you know what I mean, um, so to speak, but, you know, you have alternatives now that you didn't have in the past, if that makes sense. So at first, you know, in the past it was, you know, you had a job, right? You got a job. You work 40 to 50 hours a week at least to be considered full-time, all right? And and then you did that for however many years. If you could stick out a certain job for 30, 40 years, you could retire, boom, like that, right? Well, for one, I don't think a lot of people was actually happy with that. It was more so um, they felt like they were being forced to live that type of lifestyle to be able to survive. So I don't want to say people are necessarily different in the ways of um, they used to like it that way. You know what I mean? And, and, and now people don't. You know what I mean? I think people in the past just accepted it. You know what I mean? Um, and then the way that they were bred, the way that they were raised, they were a lot more tolerant and able to endure that type of lifestyle, even if it was something that they had to endure as opposed to enjoying themselves and living, you know what I mean? Um, they were just surviving, so to speak. And then with that said, you know, you did, it did have its perks as far as um, you might have just been surviving, you might have not been that happy, okay? But at least you felt had a level of security, okay? Now, the thing is, though, like I said, with the gig economies, freelance and virtual and things like that, people are more able to take more control of what they want to do, how often they want to do it. Because, see, that's another thing about traditional jobs is people didn't have the freedom that they, that they wanted. You know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily that everybody hated their job or hates their job, but for a lot of people, they don't like the amount of commitment, time, and energy that they have to put into it. It's not necessarily that they hate it, but they just might not want to do it 40 hours or 50 hours out of their week, if that makes sense, and feel like they have to do it, you know what I mean? Um, so with the gig economy, freelance and virtual, you know, with virtual, obviously, you know, you're, you're at home, you're able to do things more on the computer, and so you have more, more leeway, more, more freedom, okay, more comfortability, so to speak, you know what I mean? And from an um, economy standpoint, an economic standpoint, it, you know, it, it's good, and it saves on time and things like that because you got to factor in travel and, and expenses to be able to travel and get to and forth from work. So I think the virtual game or the virtual economy or the virtual work uh, workforce or labor force or life force is good in that way, okay? Um, but also with, like, and then with freelance and, like, gig economy, like I was saying, which is kind of like freelancing, you know what I mean? Like say Uber and things like that. Um, just to give an example, you know, you can pick your schedule. You know what I mean? You can pick jobs that you want, kind of like a temp service and things like that. So another point I want to make in this is that it shows how we have been prepped and primed for this to come about anyway long ago, okay, as we started transitioning long ago. Nothing happens overnight. Nothing to this magnitude happens overnight. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, a steady progression. So we've been working towards this anyway. You know what I mean? Um, with the advent of like things like temp services and things where you can go 
work for um, an agency will, will get you a job that might have lasted for anywhere from a day. You know what I mean? You get paid for the work you did that day and there's no strings attached all the way to a temp service may hook you up with a job that you got a contract with for three months. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we had, so we had already started going into that. You know what I mean? But um, now it's even more flexible. It's even more um, accessible because you can still go to a temp service, but you can also do freelance and virtual things now. We got different ways of um, generating revenue now than we did 30, 40 years ago with the advent of the internet. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just, it's different. Um, and so, you know, what it is, man, when you have, uh, when you have people who don't agree with certain changes and for things to change, it's usually because those people are already benefiting from what you stand to benefit from. You know what I mean? But they're already benefiting from that with things being the way that they already are or have been, if that makes sense. So, a lot of these people who don't want to, who don't um, support things like this and don't like where things are going are often people who already have a lot of freedom, a lot of time, money, ability to do what they want to do, ability to be happy, spend time with their family, this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? They're not necessarily in the workforce having to get up every day, go to a job, you know, the, the, the hustle and bustle, you know what I mean, and, and the rat race. They're not necessarily doing that, but in some way, they may just be benefiting from it, you know what I mean? So they're going to, you know, but they're not considering, you know, the, the average person or the rest of the world and a system in a way that can be, you know what I mean, good for everybody as much as possible. I understand everybody's not going to be in the same position in no society, but you can make things as good for people as possible, though, for everybody as possible, you know what I mean? Um, so I think this gives it more of a possibility. But um, from another standpoint, like you got shorter hours, if you know. So we've been another way we've been been prepped for this. Like you know what I'm saying. Um, every since I could remember, even when I first started working at the time when I was like 18, when I got my first job or whatever, or some somewhere around the age. Um, I think I got I did I did a couple temp service jobs at like 18. I ain't had my first steady like real job until I was about 20, 21. All right, and then um, the thing is. Even then, now, and mind you, I'm not that old, so even then, it was still strictly like you went in, it was it was jobs that was, for the most part, full-time, you know what I mean? Um, it, it wasn't these jobs like it is now, where you can, you can work four hours a day, and then you had, like, your shifts were longer. You had full-time shifts, if that makes sense. You didn't have these four-hour shifts, like part-time shifts and things like that. And for most of us, Especially growing up at that time, if you was a young person at that time, you were at that age, you were part of that generation, of that, that newer generation that doesn't want to be spending eight hours out of their day, say, at a job, if they don't, if they don't love it or they don't particularly like it and things like that. So I think it, it made it way more, um, way better, you know what I mean, for a lot of younger folks, you know what I mean, and because um, and the younger generation tends to be ADHD, like with the internet, we grown us growing up, and younger generations after um, after mine, like with us growing up with things like the internet and and phones and just and smart devices and things like that, and always having accessibility to information and different things and so much more to do in society than way before. You know what I mean? That yeah, we have a our attention span is different, and that's why with the start of my generation, you see that kids start getting diagnosed with ADHD and things like that more, you know what I mean? Um, and it's not necessarily because it is something that you should diagnose as like a, a ailment or a hindrance, but it's more so just like a different type of individual being born based on the fact of, for whatever different reason it could be, you know what I mean? But let's just say based on the fact of, um, you know, the way that society has been going and the way that we live changed, so naturally people that are born are, are are going to be different than the people that was born a hundred years ago. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the thing is, like I said, so with that said, you know, I noticed when I started working jobs where I only had to work four hours at a time and things like that, um, I became more happier and working and having to have a job became more easier for me. You know what I mean? I was much happier overall 
because I can go in and then, you know, do what I needed to do. And then I, I didn't feel like, you know, I was there too long. It was time for me to get off before you look up four hours then went by. Now you can get off, do what you need to do. So the work-life balance is a whole lot better. You know what I mean? Um, now, people would say, well, with all this, they, you know, they also took the benefits and, and then not to mention you're not working as much. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, are you going to have enough money? You know what I mean? You're going to be able to make enough money working those little hours and things like that. Well, from the benefit standpoint, you know what I mean? That's why you got to think about how everything plays off of each other. And, you know what I mean? And so just so happens, yeah. It may not be the same benefits and things like that, but jobs don't have to be as responsible for you anymore because a lot of people tend to be healthier and happier anyway and not need all the all those type of benefits. They're almost like unnecessary benefits for um, the generations coming behind because they probably will be a lot more healthier and things like that and not need to go to the doctor. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, you know, I know it's factors where you might have to go and things like that, but under the state of an emergency, it's an emergency, and you're going to go and you're going to get treatment one way or another if it's an emergency. But, um, but otherwise, you don't really need it. You know what I mean? A lot of the different benefits or some of the benefits are just be like miscellaneous, felonious benefits anyway that you barely use or it ain't going to, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world if, if you don't have them anymore, if that makes sense. And it's, in some cases, though, they are there are very good benefits too. Um, but um, so it's, it's an exchange. It's like you know you got to be willing to sacrifice something. You know what I mean. So what's more important to you? You know what I mean. But then um, and then also with the whole hours thing, it's like you don't have to work. A lot of people like what my situation was, and I know a lot of people coming up. You know what I mean. In my generation and the generations behind me. Their biggest issue is is boredom. Like that's a big thing with ADHD and having so much um, so much at your fingertips when it comes to information and things to do is is you can become bored easy, and then you want to be on to the next thing. So I think it's more conducive for the type of people that that are um, coming up now, where that's a big part of our happiness, the not being bored, and that is something that we, we that we tend to do. So when you work those shorter, shorter hours, you don't necessarily be as bored. Plus, what you can do is, just because you're working shorter hours at one particular job, it doesn't mean you can't have multiple jobs, right, to make up for those hours. So instead of working 40, 50 hours at one place, you know what I mean, doing the same thing around the same people, around the same scenery, you know what I mean, every week, week in and week out, you can do different um, tasks at different jobs and different scenery with different people okay and you can work a limited amount of hours there and then if you look up if you got three or, or four jobs that you work in at um, four hours a week or something like that then you're still getting the same hours the same pay you know what I mean so look at it look at it that way too you know what I mean you can have multiple workplaces and like I said that is good mainly not just because you're trying to make up for the money for not having one full-time job but mainly because it keeps you from getting bored different scenery different people different tasks you know what i mean and you're not there at any particular place too long okay um so it allows you to still contribute um and then you know make make a contribution and things like that and get what you need and get what you want and things like that financially you know what i mean um without you having like i said to feel like you got to sacrifice your time energy and happiness because now if you had a place 40 50 weeks and you love, absolutely love what you're doing, then that's different. You know what I mean? Um, because even at some of these jobs where, like, the jobs are becoming better, you know what I mean? Everything is a process. So um, job, uh, employ, employers are even adapting to what younger people and the um, younger generations want and, and, and trying to make the work ha um, workplace more um, comfortable, you know what I mean, and rewarding to them. You know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, what I want to, how I want to say it, like, at the same time, like, I, I'll just put it this way, because I, I, drop, I dropped that, I dropped whatever that thought was in particular, but, um, but basically, guys, I think I made, I made the point anyway, I made a good point, so yeah, you know, that, that's, that's why I think the future is going as far as employment, you know what I mean, um, oh, that's what I was going to say, came back, all right, so, the thing is, though, even in some of these jobs, and even though people are making the or employees are making the progress to try to appease 
um, the, the younger employees, okay, and the future, they still have little hang-ups and things like that where people may not want to be there eight hours, four or five days a week. There may still be little things that need to be worked out, you know what I mean, that would um, d discourage somebody from still wanting to be there 40 hours a week, even though you guys are making a whole lot of um, progression as far as, you know, making it the workplace more conducive to your workforce, okay? So, all right, guys, hopefully this is a good video piece.